Marks. And this lady right here, Marge, makes Large it. Large <laughs> No, very small, <laughs> very tiny Marge. Touchdown in San Diego. It is about 50 degrees warmer here. It is absolutely gorgeous. hospitality than the CBC group and this lady is largely responsible for it we travel we leave our families it's stressful and she makes it all better thank, thank you, you. <laughs> thank you uh, Ken Yagi I'm a registered veteran technician uh, that, that works in Los Altos California uh, at a place called Adobe Animal Hospital and I have a specialty certification in emergency and critical care and internal medicine. So he's not just a registered veterinary technician, he is a superstar veterinary technician. What, what led you into this career? <laughs> oh my god, that's a long story. Um, but uh, basically what happened was that um, I grew up not really knowing what I wanted to do. Um, when it came to time to apply for college, um, I uh, decided that I like to try to be a veterinarian. So I went to vet school for about a year, and, um, and it didn't quite work out very well. I dropped out and still wanted to be in the veterinary field, so I started to look for a job as a technician, and um, that's when I found Adobe Animal Hospital. Uh, there, I worked for a few years, um, met a person named uh, Dr. Roos, who was the person that started the hospital, and he was uh, a great mentor. I learned a lot with him. And through that process, I met somebody named Nancy Shaffron, who was a VTS in emergency and critical care, uh, who really, at the time, uh, when she heard my background, said, okay, well, do you like doing that? Right. And that was the point where I said, yeah, you know what? This is what I'd like to do. And she said, well, get yourself credentialed. There's this thing called specialty. Next time I met her, she said, do you want to present a case report? I presented a case report, and that's where my speaking career took off. Right. And um, here I am six years later. Well, I am so glad that you chose to stick with this profession because he has made a tremendous difference in just literally thousands and thousands of lives. Uh, you, you're such an award-winning speaker. I mean, he is a phenomenal speaker. If you haven't seen him, go see Ken Yagi. He's great. Your top three emergencies that, that you see and that you always want to make sure people try to avoid. One of the more common emergencies uh, related to uh, ingestions, um, eating things that they're not supposed to be eating. Uh, chocolate toxicity is one of them. You know, like leftovers uh, that could be a foreign obstruction due to a bone being stuck in the intestines. It could be um, somewhat spoiled food or fatty food that causes pancreatitis um, they come in vomiting things like that well, what, and what about prescription drugs just accidentally you know ingesting the owners uh, you know NSAIDs or things like that yeah and that's uh, actually um, one of the more common toxicities that we see as well dramatic cases would be ones that are related to trauma trauma uh, hit by car they could be uh, hemorrhaging because of uh, a, you know, neoplasia or growth cancer that cancer, has uh, ruptured yeah. within the right. abdomen. That's right. an emergency surgery typically right. that, that we have to go into right away. That's where my um, part of my interest, which is transfusion medicine, comes into play, where we, we establish the blood bank at the practice that we have, where we have a donor program, we collect the blood, we process it, and we're ready for those emergencies in case we need to give the blood in our emergency. We don't spend a lot of time talking about transfusions. No. And so um, there's a lot of misconceptions out there that have been based off of old information, or they may have been false information, that just has been propagated. And so I'm trying to bring, um, you know, research, evidence, literature that's out there, the, the newer information to incorporate it and actually change our practice. So before I let you go here, um, I know, you, you know how passionate I am about getting sort of consensus around the veterinary technician's nomenclature. You know, I, I, I don't like the term technician. Uh, I like other terms. But uh, tell us, what's, what's the current status with these, this whole veterinary technician nomenclature controversy and debate? Yeah, so the current status of it is that uh, the National Association of Veteran Technicians in America has been working very hard to gather all the information that we can gather about the topic um, using the bulk of 2016, meeting up with different stakeholders, uh, people who would be interested in, the, in this change, so veterinarians, veteran technicians, practice managers, educators, um, even the human nursing community, to try to see where we all stand with this. And um, there's a couple of uh, 
um, surveys that we've conducted. There's one that's concluding in December 31st of this year to make that the final determination of where we stand with this to um, see how we're going to progress, uh, how we're going to push the initiative in the future. And uh, you know, just with preliminary results, it looks like more people are interested in being called veterinary nurses rather than opposing that change. And But UK, uh, you know, Australia, there's uh, Japan, they're all called veterinary nurses because that's the type of care that we are going to be specializing into. Veterinary technicians have developed to the point that we provide this specialized nursing care to the animals and the title change is just one part of the entire picture of trying to make sure that people who practice in this manner have the qualification in order to do so. And Ken, that's the important point. It This nomenclature, this change in terminology it is representative of the changes that have occurred over the past 50 years within this profession. So I really applaud you for leading that effort. With young leaders like you, Ken, on board, I tell you the veterinary technician, veterinary nurse profession is in good hands. Thank you for all you do, and thanks for taking time to talk to me today. Thank you very much. I had to ask how they get the name and tell a quick story. So Ginger is our dog and when she was just six months old she had to have hip surgery for severe hip dysplasia. So they broke her hip in three places, did a triple pelvic osteotomy, sent us home, said she can't run, jump, or spin, and told us to use an old bath towel to support her weight while she healed. Yep. <laughs> and we had stairs no matter how you get in and out of our house and she felt better right away and she wanted to run down those stairs. And when she did that, the towel would pull back towards her hip that they just fixed. We'd try to run so down So they the made a better towel. We did. <laughs> and so if your dog is suffering from hip dysplasia, is painful, you're having to assist it up and out of the car, this might be a solution. Yes. Fist bumping out. <laughs> Gingerly. This is one of those products that you don't ever want to have to have, but if you have to have it, you want it. Antivenom for snake bites, especially for rattlers, it can be deadly. And these great people here make a product that just may save your pet's lives. If you live anywhere where rattlesnakes are indigenous, make sure your veterinarian stocks some sort of antivenom because when you need it, you really need it. wailing wall for veterinarians. This is a really cool project that uh, my friends at DBM 360 are setting up. What you see behind me are confessionals. And so all around the country at all these conferences, people can come here and anonymously or not post something that bugs them or that something they just want to get off their chest. So it's very therapeutic and uh, actually gives us a lot of insight in some of the ways we can help veterinarians and veterinary technicians, but uh, really cool, really cool. I want one, Santa. I've been really, really, really good. That is the latest in imaging technology for veterinary clinics, and you can get it today. Wow, what a cool world we live in. Hey, Santa. Scanners, can I have one of these? 